because what's most important about any workout you do is that you do it to your utmost, to your best. What is gonna give you the best benefit, the most gains for the energy you're putting in? Good day, good people, and welcome back to the Black Country. And we are here again today to take you through a raw workout. Recently on my Instagram, I put up a post structuring a high volume, high frequency training session that I was advising you guys to do and I broke it down from day one to day five, how to split your body parts and um, do this high frequency training. And I'm gonna take you through a full workout today to show you guys an exact example of how I go about doing this. So I will do this session, take a break during the day, then go do the fight training or do my strength and conditioning training or flip it the other way around, do the strength and conditioning and fight training prior, take a break and then come and do this. And that's how I'm structuring my training as we see at the moment. The great thing about the high frequency training is you are training everything at least twice a week. You're only doing two exercises per body part. You're gonna do an isolation and a compound per body part, but you're gonna do five sets. You're gonna do three body parts per session. So you end up doing more body parts, less volume on each body part, but you're gonna repeat it again later in the week. You end up doing more work on those body parts over that seven day period. So not only is this gonna be more interesting, faster paced and less risk of injury, so you're gonna feel great and you're hopefully gonna break through those plateaus. So now we're gonna head into Black Country Barbell, the most beautiful gym in the area, and we're gonna hit this up raw, but we're gonna take you through set by set, rep by rep, how to break it down. But first, a little bit of chemistry. There's a little bit of chemistry, oh, but ignore the chemistry. Baby beard, how it used to be. Remember the days. <laughs> if you want to see this type of beard back here, let me know in the comment section now. Otherwise, check out this and his Instagram will pop up here. <laughs> you know you're a gym nerd when you get excited about stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Music's loud. I don't even know what half of those words on there say. All I saw was vasodilation. Lumps. Pre-workout poops. <laughs> Pre-workout poops. That's, that's a little disconcerting. But we're going to hit this straight to the dome. We're going to hit this high volume workout. But this is not at all that I'm going to be doing today. After this, I'm going straight to a dojo to do some circuit bike fitness work with Clark Fit. So he's a Canadian who lives in America who's now in England. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do some kind of bike fitness training carousel work for Instagram so you guys can swipe across and get some good workouts in there. But let's hit this workout. Remember, high frequency. On this, the goal is not heavy weight. It's as heavy as you can go whilst maintaining good form. We're gonna be pushing eight to 12 rep ranges, but feel free to fuck around with the rep ranges. I will often go lower reps on biceps because they're a smaller muscle and I wanna squeeze a little bit harder, so that tends to bring the, uh, the reps down a bit. When you're doing something like back, you can go a little bit heavier than you would maybe because that's a strong muscle group. So again, when I give you these things to do, have a little bit of a play. Keep the general structure, but feel free to just adapt them to how you like them best. Because what's most important about any workout you do is that you do it to your utmost, to your best. I'm gonna give you the major points, major body parts, but accessories like calves, abs, forearms, put them in when you're going to do them best. That also goes for cardio as well. People always ask me, should I do cardio before? Should I do it after if you're trying to like lose weight or just get fitter? It doesn't really fucking matter in the big picture. If you want the nitty gritty of it, after workout is better because the blood lipid levels are higher. But the reality is, you're gonna get out what you put in. So if you do cardio better before weights, do it before. If you do cardio better away from the gym in total, do it that way. Don't get stuck, don't get blinkered in these one trick pony kind of ways. There are many ways of adapting things, but one solid basis. Let's crack on with this workout now. Jay? Yes, mate. Interesting montage, please. Okay, so important things, remember, even if you don't see it, we're always warming up before we do these workouts. So obviously do appropriate warm-ups. Don't like warm up your left butt cheek when you'll be working shoulders. <laughs> Get what I'm saying? But into the workout what we're gonna be doing now. Pre-workout's kicked in. <laughs> okay, so the workout that we're gonna be doing now, I'm gonna be supersetting this workout, and that's because I'm pressed for time, because I'm gonna get somewhere else to do some more filming shortly, and that's when supersets come into play. Supersets don't add more muscle to do that. What they do is allow you to do more work in less time. So I will be supersetting this, but feel free to do this single body parts at a time. So you can do your shoulder movements, five sets, and then move on to the next. But what I would say is, do a full five sets of one body part, then do the next four, five sets of the first exercise of the next body part, and you get what I'm saying. So chop it up. One, 
it's going to keep it really interesting but two you're going to stay super fresh because you're not beating any body part down to death so you're going to move faster through each workout and you're also going to sustain a better form and technique because you're giving that body time to rest rather than drilling it back to back exercises that makes sense so we're going to be working today we're going to be doing two exercises as i said per body part for shoulders we're going to be doing a double movement lateral and front raise so it's taking two movements into one eight to twelve reps then we're going to be doing for the other shoulder we're going to be doing the arnold press and we're going to be doing that standing so that we have to control the hips and the core for hamstrings we're going to be doing some straight legged dumbbell deadlifts remaining deadlifts call them remaining yeah. deadlifts and then alongside that we're going to be doing a little bit of a unique one where we use our body weight plus a medicine ball on that beastie which is basically designed so that you use your upper body as a lever for the hamstrings so we're going to be using that i quite like it it's nice and functional you can obviously adapt that if you don't have one of those just do a front lying leg curl same thing i just like this one because it stresses you a little bit more makes you use your core just helps me with my postural deficiencies and for triceps we're going to be doing two movements one on the cables and one with dumbbells the first one is going to be a dumbbell skull crusher variation which i really like and I really feel does hit the triceps in a completely different way to other exercises that are available. So if you haven't done this one before, you're really gonna love it. The second one we're gonna be doing is an underhand grip tricep extension. One that a lot of people don't think about doing, but it's very, very good on keeping elbows healthy. So if you find that on press motions, you're getting some elbow pain, this could be one that can help work around that and it's still gonna give you that epic tricep pump. We're gonna be doing one set roll where I talk you through it. Then we're gonna be montaging those motherfuckers to get you motivated. You ready, Jay? All right, let's go. Two. So, so what we're looking for here, hammer grip, lifting from the elbows, out to the sides, laterals as standard, keeping the weights parallel to the floor, up to the front with that hammer grip. If you have any shoulder infringements, this is really going to help with that. I'm looking to not let the upper body swing, keep that rib cage down, core controlled, soft knees. Eight, eight, nine, nine. Eleven, twelve, uh, twelve. Straight into Romanian. So what we're looking for here, set the shoulders back. I'm gonna roll my feet out and twisting my feet underneath, knees out. I'm gonna kick back and move from the hips. I don't move from the upper body, I move from the hips. So I kick my hips back, which allows the weight to come forward. Feel the stretch, load it, and from here now, I drive heel and hips. Boom. So what I'm not doing is lifting from my back. I'm not lifting from here. Yeah. I'm lifting from my driving heels and hips. Boom. 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 Five of those bitches. So next up we're going to be doing underhand triceps into an Arnold shoulder press. Then from that we're going to be doing the triceps with the hamstrings. So we're thinking about the way we're structuring the workout in terms of what movements are going to go best into the next. So I wouldn't want to be doing the hamstring movements with a medicine ball after doing shoulders because my shoulders are going to be fatigued. So I wouldn't want to be doing them side by side. So that's why I'm going to be doing the shoulders with this tricep and then a tricep with the hammies. So for the underhand grip, I'm using two handles, but you can use a straight bar if you want. With this, I'm looking to keep my rib cage down, shoulders back, and I pull my elbows into that start position. I'm not starting up here. This is my finish position. Start right, finish right. Knees soft, don't let my upper body move from here. Squeeze, angle on the arm, all the way back up. Really flex at the bottom, little split. Allow the hands to move to a natural, neutral position, but keeping that underhand grip. Six, aiming for eight to 12s on these. Straight to those Arnold presses. On that Arnold press, nine, 10. Again, we're looking for rib cage control, glutes engaged. 11, I think that's 12, do some more. One, two, straight in. Ribs down, knees soft. What I'm looking for here is a real deep turnout. Starting here, roll them right out and press up. Don't get shallow, 
keep it there, make that scapula work, make the shoulder work through the full range of motion. And really, straight up and straight down, try not to angle too much as you come up. Full extension is when the arms are extended, not lifting the shoulders up excessively. And you see, rib cage is kept down, chest is kept forward, head neutral. Ah, eight, four, nine, four, ten, four, eleven, four, four, fuck. That is a beautiful exercise when it's done right, but a lot of people tend to do this shallow movement and they bring the traps in. Relax the neck, relax the traps, work the shoulders. So this is basically a lying hamstring variation that uses your body weight and a little bit more free weight control, free body control even. What I'm going to want is my knees on this pad so that they become the leverage point. I'm actually going to be coming over a little bit and sitting upright because there's a lot of stress on the muscle with this. I'm going to do as many as I can with the medicine ball, then ditch it and just do some free bodies after that. Then we're going to move straight from this onto the tricep skull crusher variation with dumbbells. Okay, but first, let's do this piece. Yeah. One, two, drop. So it's only three, and now literally just body weight. Boom, using your hands if you need to, just to control. Oh. Five, six, seven, eight. Ooh, mother. Ooh. Only eight reps, but those first three were fucking hard. So you're gonna lie down. This is a light dumbbell exercise. Do not get carried away, this is a light exercise. You're gonna get your head right on the end so that there's clearance. From here, we're gonna start at an angle. We do not come back up to straight. Angle start, already there's pressure here now on the triceps, so I'll keep my shoulders down, I'll keep my rib cage down. I'm gonna extend down with a hammer grip, down to the sides of the head. Full extension on that tricep, keeping those elbows at an angle. Now, as I come up, I'm not gonna bring my elbows forward. They're gonna stay where they are and I come up and rotate palms to ceiling and squeeze. If I bring here, I lose all tension. Start here, hammers, down, rotate, squeeze. Stretch, rotate, squeeze. Elbows, fixed position, rib cage down. Try not to overarch that lower back. I'm planting my feet. Bang. 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 Eight. Elbows tight. Nine. Ow. Ooh. One of my favorites. Go. too shabby at the moment that high fat diet is kicking in we'll be covering more on my diet later on but now you have everything in that kind of base structure to be able to go and take some high frequency work put this into your routine or make this your routine i will be doing four or five days a week of this i have that split on my instagram so make sure to check that out but basically what it is is three body parts per day two exercises per body part you're going to do each body part twice per week Fitting your accessories in as and when you're seeing you're gonna do them best when you're gonna put the most into them. So it doesn't really matter, those abs, forearms and calves, put them in as you see fit. This is a time-saving but still high-intensity workout. And remember, the best part about this is, even though you're doing less volume per day, over that seven-day period, you actually end up doing way more work than the standard bro split of doing one body part at a time and beating the shit out of it. So that by the end of your workout, your reps, your connection to the muscle and everything is so diminished that you're getting very little out of that energy that you're putting in there. This is all about, this whole, this whole gym, gym thing is about being as scientifically accurate as you can be in terms of getting the most out of the energy you're putting in. What is gonna give you the best benefit, the most gains for the energy you're putting in? And for me, on my opinion, 
it is a high frequency training because we're hitting those muscles again within a 72 hour period so we're keeping that protein synthesis going it's going to optimize your time it's going to optimize your enjoyment this is so much more fun than just feeling ground down and beat up moving flipping switching focusing and still having that energy and realizing how fast you can get through workouts so you're not in the gym for two or three hours at a time if you want to put in things like deadlifts if you are still programming deadlifts you would just put them in on a back day and if you wanted you could make your entire back focus of the deadlift that day if you're wanting to do seven to ten sets like your program suggests and then if you're on a lower day where you're only doing five sets or maybe even three or four sets then you can follow that up with a low intensity back exercise maybe a body weight one that's going to focus more on that core control and contraction control so you've got the high intensity deadlift that high work rate that heavy weight followed by a lightweight controlled exercise just think about it structure it play with it there is no one perfect way but there are some great foundations and this is one of them i hope you've enjoyed this video if you want to see more of this let me know let me know any questions any confusion you've got whack them in the comments below we do read them and i will answer you thank you all for tuning in again another undisputed episode in the box nice work jay hey, mate. i'm pretty hey, sure his montages have been pretty sick hey, hey, if you ain't motivated by now blame jay i'm lex <laughs> boom baby we out see you next episode <laughs> lately i've been doing shit different cooking like a chef i've been all up in the kitchen had to make a move had to make a little distance a lot of people tripping they could never see the vision fuck that tell them bounce